Good afternoon. My name is Rose Klukas. I am the City of Campbell Rivers Manager of Economic Development. And we're here today to talk about forestry. It is National Forestry Week, September 19th to 25th. And throughout the week, you're going to see the Campbell River Economic Development post information about the importance of forestry to Campbell River's economy. So for those of you who might be interested in the history of National Forestry Week, it was actually originally established in 1920 as Forest Fire Prevention Week. So that was quite interesting when I read that. The intention was to encourage greater public awareness towards Canada's forests. And then in 1967, it was renamed to National Forest Week. And the goal of National Forest Week is to bring awareness to Canadians about their forest heritage and support greater recognition of this valuable resource. So I'm very fortunate today to have a panel of experts in forestry and in careers here to speak with us. Um, but before we get started, and before I allow our guests to introduce themselves, I wanted to give a quick snapshot about Campbell River. Um, did you know that Campbell River is home to 115 logging companies and 33 forest service companies? Forestry makes up 7% of the share of jobs in Campbell River. And uh, just to give you a bit of a comparison, it, the BC number is 2.6%. And for Campbell River, that translates into approximately 1,200 direct jobs. So 1,200 people directly employed in forestry. And we know that uh, for every job created in industry, there can be approximately three additional jobs created in the community. So it's a significant contributor to our economy and to people's families. Um, so I'm not going to chatter anymore. I am going to allow our guests to introduce themselves. And we have uh, Domenico here. Domenico, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, yourself and what you do? Yeah, thanks, Rose. Uh, great opportunity here. Uh, every week is uh, Forest Week for me uh, as the Chief Forester of Mosaic Forest Management. Uh, I'm Domenico Yanni Dinardo. Yes, I've been in the business for over 25 years. And uh, I tell you, um, it was something I got introduced to by my father. And if if you're thinking about a job and uh, you don't mind getting a little bit wet or getting a little bit hot uh, as a trade-off for all the fresh air and uh, the beauty that you get working on the coast of BC, you definitely got to think about forestry. Um, um, you know, it's renewable and uh, there are a variety of ways to participate in it. Um, certainly a, a couple of big streams. Uh, you could uh, work on on the ground and really be out there helping, helping with the operations, getting it done, or you can, you can be into the, into the management and planning side of it. And uh, Rose, I can talk about those whenever you like here uh, today, whenever you suggest. Yeah. We'll let Chris introduce himself because I do want to come back to uh, a couple of questions in, uh, that I have for you on that. Chris, go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Thank you, Rose. I'm Chris Callanan, the Regional Manager for Employer Services with NIFS, also known as North Island Employment Foundations. And our office covers uh, the region of Campbell River to Northern Vancouver Island and all of the communities in between. And for interest's sake, uh, my first job was actually in the forestry sector. I worked for Pacific Regeneration Technologies for five years as a high school student and was able to pay my entire university tuition tree planting every summer. Uh -huh. Yeah, thank you. And I, I think that it's a good point. I think many BC uh, people and families have a connection to the industry. Um, so Domenico, I was kind of interested, you talked about the different careers, whether you're an outside person who wants to be um, there or an office person. Um, can you describe that a little bit more as well? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, uh, by the numbers, most of the employment involve uh, the frontline workers and those who uh, are out every day, uh, bright and early, typically uh, getting things done at very specific places on the landscape and often at very specific times, growing trees and, and moving logs and building roads. So the truck drivers, the, the equipment operators, mechanics. Also, when it comes to uh, some of the operations we have on the water, we have uh, boats and, and barges that need to be moved around. Managing our forests takes a lot of uh, care and attention as well. These are crops that take multiple decades to mature. 
most of the forests on uh, certainly southern Vancouver Island anyway are second world forests and they require people to go out there on a regular basis certainly when they're early in their next rotation to make sure invasive plants and other creatures don't uh, enjoy the fine new seedlings that we've planted so and uh, there's that there's that side of it and a lot of people working in it and then there's forestry management positions where basically it's about planning we've got a lot of things to do but how do we connect it up to the big picture and make sure we're sustainable and uh, sensitive of all the other values including wildlife and of course uh, public recreation and safety so all of those things come together and um, dozens and dozens of job roles for people to consider so I think that's interesting because, you know, there are people who might think that there are no, there is no future in careers in forestry. But what you're saying is that that is not true, that there's lots of opportunity for employment within forestry. If you believe people are going to be increasingly sensitive about climate change, increasingly sensitive about renewability and biodegradability, uh, you have to believe that that starts with something uh, as truly renewable as trees and forests. So please so, think about it everybody yeah no interesting um chris you uh you know what uh jobs are in, on the market today um can you talk a, bit, a little bit if someone comes to NIFs, um what kind of supports would you have in place for them yeah great question if someone were to come into our office and talk about um there are career options within the forestry sector, civil, civil culture sector, we can definitely cater and tailor made services to that individual. So it's not a cookie cutter approach, but a person could connect with one of our employment counselors um, that we have on staff here to explore career opportunities and different options within the sector, whether it's a boots on the ground type position or something in office or even a leadership role if that were to become available as well. But also with our counselors, a person could talk about um, school options and school funding options that if there's training needed, whether it's short term or long term, having that conversation with our counselors to determine is this the best option for me and can it lead me to full time sustainable work as we know that can be tricky in the sector as well. But the biggest advice I have is uh, stop by our office and connect with our counseling team and our staff is more than happy to help and help point out different options that perhaps you weren't even aware of in the sector. Hmm, that's interesting. So another question then for you, Domenico, is that you've been in the industry for 25 years, you said at the beginning. Um, how has it changed? Certainly, uh, when I got into it uh, in the 90s, people's awareness about the uh, additional values other than just timber uh, came to the fore uh, and continue to rise in public awareness and customer appreciation for all these uh, co-benefits that come from using well uh, products from well-managed forests. Uh, and with that in improvement in management, I think commensurately is technology that helps us track and measure and monitor what we are doing, and how we contribute to a positive uh, built environment with the products that come from forests. But uh, uh, increasingly and uh, gratefully, uh, the improvements in safety that come with it. So it's uh, it still has a, some, a job, uh, some jobs with a significant hazard but compared to when I started and certainly uh, back further, uh, safety is now paramount for workers and people should feel confident that uh, if they are up for the, uh, the challenges, the rewards are there and safety is something that is a shared responsibility and uh, something on everyone's mind all the time now. I think one thing in economic development that we're noticing is that technology and innovation um, are a, a big way for businesses to stay and grow in communities and how do you see that technology and innovation changing for the forestry practice um you know uh, with the perhaps uh trade-offs that you might hear a lot about with mechanization um reducing jobs in forests there's an equal force increasing the jobs in forests when it comes to the additional monitoring and the interpretation of data that uh, continues to grow exponentially. And uh, putting those together, I feel, uh, makes the industry more reliable as a consistent employer as well for those getting into the business and something that they can count on, particularly if they do what they can along the way uh, to diversify uh, their, their uh, credentials uh, 
get uh, some multiple complimentary tickets uh, so that uh, you know you can uh, plant trees or maybe you can go fight fires uh, when it's too hot to plant trees and uh, stack those up and, and cover your seasons if you want to work four seasons uh, you're very likely to have a, a, a full a full agenda so Chris, um, how, you've been doing your role for a while as well. How do the jobs, do you see something different with the job postings today compared to even five or 10 years ago? What kind of jobs are you seeing in the sector on the board? So we've, first and foremost, we've seen more job growth than ever. We're posting monthly stats on our job board uh, to the point that NIFS has never seen numbers this high, which is a good thing for uh, for the community as well. But the difference really is in the in the breadth and scope of jobs that we're seeing. We see all of the complementary jobs that Domenico was referring to. We see uh, aerial imaging companies starting to post uh, that they're looking for folks wanting to get into the sector that way and perhaps have a, a tech-based background. Perhaps that's an avenue they could look at as well. Um, we've definitely seen more growth away from the, the entry level jobs, and, and those jobs will always be there. But now we see a full range and scope of jobs that have definitely grown over the last 10 years. And more so, we see those mid level and senior level positions as employers are reaching out to us to say, how, how can we help get the word out on filling those needs in an ever changing market? Mm. Yeah, and we're very fortunate as well. We have North Island College and that offers programming to support training in the forest industry as well. Okay, we're going to wrap it up uh, in, a, in a moment. So I'm going to give each of you uh, the opportunity to leave some parting wisdom. Um, but, you know, again, we want to just acknowledge that forestry is a huge contributor to our economies, both locally and in British Columbia. Um, one final word for you, Chris. For if me, it would be... Uh, if employers want to connect with us, we offer a whole suite of options available to local employers to help fill their talent and recruitment needs. And as well, we do have our job seeker services that we're known to uh, assist the community with. But I do want to make sure that employers know they can connect with me and the team here, and we'll do everything possible to help them fill those gaps in the labor force. And final word to you, Domenico. Uh, thanks again, uh, Rose and City Council River for hosting us. Uh, this is very important. And uh, what a great uh, service to have uh, through Chris and the Employment Foundation Society, plus uh, the resources at North Island College. Um, uh, we, I want people to think about uh, something called Project Learning Tree, look that up. Uh, I know Chris is aware of it. It has a lot of information there. And I uh, encourage everyone to do their homework, study up forestry and think broadly about what it means to be a part of that uh, industry. Great. So thanks for joining me this afternoon. And for everyone watching, please uh, keep following us on our Facebook, City of Campbell River Economic Development, where we'll continue to share information.